Welcome to the Iconic Talk Show, In Conversation with Dr. Anu Mehta, Board of Member and Representative of India for Meta Health International. A warm welcome to the Iconic Talk Show, Dr. Mehta. Thank you, Nirali, for calling me here. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. We are honored to have you on board. Thank you again. Can you kindly share your journey with Meta Health? So when you're talking about journey with Meta Health, it's basically not just with Meta Health. It's a journey that I went along with everything else like in my life. So the brilliant part of it was that with Meta Health, I was able to get over uh, abuse that had happened to me at the age of six. Okay, so um, it all started in a sequence. I met Carl Dawson, I met Richard Fluke. Um, I met uh, different mentors in my life came at the time when we were moving from Czech Republic back to India. Now, this is also the time when I was attending uh, Carl Dawson's first class of matrix re-imprinting. Richard Fluke was there and in Czech Republic, they don't speak in English. And yet I had, uh, you know, kind of pulled these beautiful mentors in my life. Um, when you are sexually touched at that tender age, you can't make sense of what's happening. And at the time, um, I was about 40, 45, and when I recovered these memories back, it kind of felt as if my whole world had fallen apart. Because in between, there was no memory. I knew something had happened but I didn't have the exact memory of what had happened. Yeah. Now, it was basically searching for my myself back again that led me into finding all these mentors who then took me through a journey of what a disease could be like if I didn't solve the conflict that was lying right inside me. And in the process of finding myself, I found I literally felt as if God held my hand and said, this is for you, go ahead and help others who are in the same predisposition or similar predisposition as you who are finding themselves. I'm not just talking about abuse, I'm talking about who are finding themselves. And in the last 14 years that I've worked in India, there has been, I found that my journey with mental health has been nothing less of a miracle. Yeah, so it just helped me to kind of find peace within myself. The quest for your own why? I don't think I've taken myself seriously, ever. Right or anything around me seriously. It was more like, you know, you just exist. You just do what you're supposed to do. You get married, you make children. I mean, I was lecturing in college before that, but you just do things. This was a turning point in my life where I wasn't just doing things. I was questioning things. I was asking why that has happened. I was I was angry, I was, I was everything put together. I was angry, I was happy, I was excited. Um, I wanted to live, I wanted to die. True. I wanted to exist one day and the next day was like, oh, what's the point? And when you're in that stage of your life where you, where nothing matters, you know, you just come to a place where you say, Nothing matters. I need to find the answers for myself. And that's where everything changes. The purpose of your life. Kind of. Yeah. It resonates with you because even I've had a rough patch from 2010 to 2018. And that's when even my search for my own path led me where I am today. Wow. What is better health? <laughs> so, So, uh, you know what's health, right? Absolutely. So health is when people describe that you should be fit and but most of the people don't even realize that 
just because they don't have a tag, just because they didn't visit a doctor, even if they did visit the doctor, you know, your blood pressure is on a borderline. So you say, oh, I, I'm not unwell. My sugar levels on borderline. I'm not unwell. Yeah. But doesn't it start much before that? So Meta is giving you a broader perspective, a broad understanding of what disease is. And if you break down the word disease, you simply have to sit down and ask yourself, what in your life you're not comfortable about? What in your life is not okay with you? And that started long before your disease ever walked in. So disease is, if you really want to decode a disease, you need to, you need to really visit and ask yourself those tough questions. What am I not comfortable about? This relationship is not working. Am I like pulling this relationship? Am I pulling this job constantly? Am I just pretending to smile? What is it that I'm doing that's not in touch with, I wouldn't say life purpose, because that's such a big word and it's like so glorified. I only understand very simply that if you have hunger, then what's that hunger like? You have to eat three times a day? So three times a day, ask yourself, what are you not comfortable with? And you'll find your answers. If you can make yourself comfortable, great. Don't compromise. If you can't make yourself comfortable, run. Don't stay in the situation. But if you've decided to stay in the situation just because you're going to make other people in your life comfortable, then take precautions because you know that you're heading a disease. And that's what Meta Health is all about. We try to find out the Meta that's above, um, the reason why someone has continued being in that discomfort. And sometimes you're chronically in that discomfort for years and years and years and years. And then your skeletal system, your blood system, your skin, your just kind of falls flat and and you just don't know what else to do. Yeah. So that's what is meta health. Thank you so much for the knowledge <laughs> because I did not know what meta health was. And yeah. Thank you for adding the ray of knowledge into my life of meta health. Well, you've been conducting a lot of training programs. Yes. Right? So what is emotional freedom technique? So uh, meta health is by itself like a if you look at it, if you look at an umbrella, meta health is the center portion which tells you why of a disease. Right. Emotional freedom technique does not free you of any emotions. It helps you to deal with the emotions. And in fact, it helps you sometimes to cry out, to, to deal with, to become even aware that you have those emotions. Write out your emotions. Not even when most of us are walking around like as if they don't exist. Emotion? Oh, what is that? Yeah. Very pre nicely people say it's energy in motion, but I don't even know that sadness is an emotion. I don't know frustration is an emotion. Anger is an emotion. And there's, there's a whole gallery of emotions that we don't even touch. True. So emotional freedom technique is a simple tapping technique, just tapping on certain points which help you to ease out your meridians of the body and help you to remove the blockages of your body. But the simple tapping can change your blood reports, can actually, my father who was ailing and couldn't speak, all he did was just tap. You don't even need the statements. Of course, if you want to do therapy, then you need the statements and the whole process. Right. So very simply, emotional freedom technique is, is that therapy that we could attach with after finding out what is the reason of a disease. And then you have uh, a therapy that will help you to deal with that. Because at the end of it, it's a suppressed emotion. Right. You're suppressing something. And that needs to walk out of your body, not really walk out, transform. I would say when you let go of your sadness, 
would you invite back in your life? Because you can't leave that place just like that. Yeah. So I hope I've been able to explain that. And tapping points could be right from here to top of the head, eyes, side. These are just various tapping points. Yeah. It's the movement thing when you stand straight and you're moving your, bending your knees and putting the motion from your knees back in front and then tapping all over. Not really. You don't need to do that. You can be lying down on top of a cloud and tapping. You know, there's no sequence per se. And I could just tap on one point. I could tap on my whole. So when they when they begin be, began with the tapping, uh, they kind of created what two hundred and odd points. Now you're not going to tap on all those points. Right. So really you tap on around 13 or 14 points. And sometimes when you're using a higher level of EFT, which is matrix re-imprinting, I won't call it higher level or lower level, but a different kind or different technique. We hardly uh, use a few points of, on which you're tapping and you can still get an amazing result. Okay. So when a patient comes to you for training, is the training program or the duration of the program? Uh, when you're taking uh, meta health, so I began with meta health first. Right. It's level one, level two, level three in Different India. Different phases. Different phases. Yeah. So level one is around two days. Level three, uh, I'll, right now because of the COVID, we started it online. So it's actually 12 hours. And then uh, we take in India about five days for level two and then five days for level three. So what it has is... Uh, Meta Health has in the first two days you talk about embryology, you talk about various. It's it's got science base. It's got about the brain. It's slightly intellectual way of going about it. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about conflicts. You're talking about what's really causing the issue, and uh, in depth process along with therapies that we gave you in the first two days. Then you you like it. You you go in depth into it, and the. The, the best or the most favorite part of mine is the third level. Actually, the second and the third level is integrated together. So we call it the A and the B module, uh, which gives you the practitioner's uh, view. And this is full of what mental health is all about. Like what is bipolarity? What is psychosis? What is what, what are the different terminologies that you're looking at? Why someone would go out? Why someone who has never cheated on um, you know, his wife or, or or on her husband would suddenly go out shopping and get drunk and, and cheat and come back home and feel nothing. Absolutely. And why would that happen suddenly? Uh, why would someone, uh, you know, get into homosexuality? Why would someone uh, suddenly want to give up on life and sit down and want to commit suicide? It's, it's fascinating why someone would want to cut himself and commit suicide and the other one would want to hang and maybe the third one would want to have pills and so the answers are lying down in the in the in the story of meta health with matrix re-imprinting and EFT we have three days of level one and level two of EFT and then we have for India four days of matrix re-imprinting which is a higher level it's advanced level it's an advanced level and we do it together and uh, the difference here is that matrix, as you call it, is talking about all of us being in pool of energy. That's the matrix, the network. Re-imprinting, re means doing it again. Printing means something that was back in time that you're not happy with. Let's say something happened to you at the age of one. How much of a memory are you going to have of it? So the perceptions that we created at one, we're still carrying it at maybe 51, 52, 81, 82. And people are still living their life with the understandings that they got at one year of age. And so the baggage just goes on. The baggage goes on. And, just, and all you do is you go back, really do the cleaning process there, recreate new understandings. And then re-imprint the whole scene, which means create a scene which now tells your psyche and your mind that all is well. And if you've heard of the scientist called Bruce Lipton, he talks about how beautifully matrix re-imprinting can you change your story and you change the story of the cells. 
you change the story of your disease. You change the story of who you are. Within this life, you take a rebirth again. So that's what is matrix reimprinting. Thank you so much. This was insightful. Uh, are these courses of yours accredited? Do you give yes. certifications to yes. your students? Yes, yes. And they, they're all internationally certified under uh, organizations. So you have uh, Meta Health International, which is from where you will be getting, you know, in fact, the certificate is barcoded and uh, you're put under the website and right. stuff like By that. The CPD or yeah. the yes, yes. And similarly uh, with the uh, with mat with EFT and matrix ray imprinting. In fact, you have to give tests and the minute you give your test, your certificate comes in. Uh, I mean, I give a mandatory certificate, okay, you've completed it. And then you get another certificate which is signed by Carl Dawson himself. Yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful process by which, you know, you have your proper certificates and that can help you in an even in college, even in your, yeah. you know, admissions and stuff like that. These certificates have a weight. So absolutely they do because certifications play such an important role yes. in you know professional trajectory growth. Absolutely. Okay. When you talk about um, the, the, the certifications and the traditions, when the uh, participants and students of course you know give the exams and leave your institute, uh, do you give any hand holding support or mentoring support? Absolutely because after this it's not that oh you've done this and you you're done with. Yeah. We have what is called supervisions and we meet um, maybe every Thursday, not maybe in person, but over the Zoom. Yes. And uh, if you need anything, it's like almost after the program is done, you still have about you know six months of those supervisions going on, yes. where people are connecting with each other. Plus you're allowed to go out and work and, and help someone out yes. because you cannot go wrong. And the reason you cannot go wrong is, like I said, Simple tapping, even when you haven't said a statement, changes your blood reports. And that is uh, scientifically proven. Um, so Kerry Gregg, who created uh, EFT, um, he tested it with the soldiers. He tested it with the you know, people who had PTSD. He tested it with anxiety and fabulous results. Mm. Um, so I myself got over the big, fear that I had for years around the dogs and uh, I keep laughing today I sleep with my dog I mean you know you sleep with your fear and uh, have a beautiful golden retriever she's three years of age it took me years to get over it I was bitten at the age of six by a dog um, and and then you go through a journey where Everybody's asking you to keep a dog and you, you have every excuse under the earth. Believe me, I came up with every excuse that you could think like, oh, dog is like a cockroach or dog is like that. And, and today, I mean, she's my oxytocin, she's my dopamine. So mm -hmm. the shift happens because you're ready to shift your perceptions around the same thing that you may be scared of. And that's same with anything, you know, relationships with human beings are also in the same way. We, we put a tap to them and say, you're never going to change. You're stuck. So the image that we have of people gets stuck. The image that we have of ourselves gets stuck. And we never move past it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is a quote you want to share with the audience? Do you have a particular quote which you like, which you would like to share with the audience? I would say never give up. Because in my experience, at the time when you're giving up is the exact time when if there is something called God, universe, is deciding what's a choice you're going to take. We often wait for someone, a Masiha, to come and pick us up. The reality is you are your own Masiha. Just walk another two steps. And I'm sure you're going to see such bright light right there that everything changes from there. You know, there may be days when things are not going well, and that's fine. Every day is not supposed to be uh, a bright day. But there are, even the shadows have a meaning. Shadows can only happen if there's a light. So if you can see light and shadows and understand that no matter what, don't look back. You can't drive your car or you can't drive your life in a reverse gear. 
just take small trusted steps believe in yourself everything will work out for you lovely dr ali mehta how do you mix color psychology with meta health thank you so much for asking me that question uh, first of all you know it's been a puzzle what's meta health so uh, do you have someone who i could work with maybe rishab if i absolutely. could work with him absolutely so rishab will um, be your participant for the day <laughs> thank you i'd love to meet him yeah so uh rishab do you have any uh, any health issue that's presently being you know that you is troubling you i have specs so maybe eyes okay so first of all if i was to look from the meta health point of view i would ask him that uh, is it something that you can't see which is far off or is it something that you can't see which is nearby so far which off. far off so your um, number must be a minus number and what is it minus minus 3 is it in both the eyes yes both eyes do you also have cylindrical number i might have i have no you have no idea okay since when do you have the eye problem when i was in first standard okay so first let's hear vocabulary if i'm hearing i'm saying what is it where do you have the eye problem so eye is to do with the identity with eye as a problem and if i'm looking and breaking the i and i e plus y e s it sounds like e plus yes and e could represent over here certain ego you know something around our ego that's not functioning that i want other people to say yes to me something around our expectations that i want people to say yes to me something around my emotions that have been suppressed but because this is to do with something that's far off we know that it's not connected with his mom we also know it's not connected with someone who is very close to because he's not rejecting that person who's he's rejecting what is far off and if he's rejecting what is far off then it's someone in his unit it could have been someone at that time when he started getting the specs who he felt was an authority figure maybe who was stopping him from doing something that he wanted to do or see something that he wanted to see and i think that comes up for you when i say this yes what would that be uh because when i was in first standard there was this taboo kind of thing in my mind only because in the class every year no one used to wear specs so i thought that i am the only one and i'll be the you know odd man out right yes this was something which was bothering me so how does you how do you feel when you feel you're an odd person out yes it it did feel awkward at that time okay so you know, when no one is doing something and i'm the only one who's uh, you know wearing so in my mind you know, uh, when i started wearing specs it was hard for me to go to school for like a week and two okay So it was hard for you to go to school because because I felt like I was the alien in uh, you know uh, wearing specs in to accept myself in okay. a very new way. Okay. So uh imagine you're going back to that time and I'm going to use four colors right now and imagine if you were in the shoes of that younger you at that time. Uh, the younger rishab who doesn't want to go to school who's got this you know chashma ka problem and doesn't want to go to school now uh just think of this beautiful gorgeous orange color of the oranges the yellow of the sunlight or the green of the first leaves that are coming on the leaf, on the and the blue of your coat so if i was to give you these four colors what color would you um at that age what color would you accept and what color would you reject i would accept uh, yellow and blue okay and orange and green okay uh so yellow guys stands for you know uh expectation of the future and his expectation was that if he did go to school people are going to mock him he's going to look like an alien that was his expectation and the blue has got to do with uh how you connect with people and this is something that he was thinking in his head about how people would mock him that he's an alien so he had to tolerate himself 
and he felt that people had to tolerate him and that's the blue and the yellow together and the red part means I reject going to school. I reject something when in my head I think, oh my God, you know, people are going to treat me differently. I start rejecting that altogether. Oh, vibe ni aati hai then. You get it? <laughs> and, and then uh, you see you have this red, beautiful orange color. Not really red, but the orange color, which in us we look at it as Lucia. Uh, orange is considered as a red color. So this beautiful orange color is actually saying I quit any activity if I have to tolerate or I feel people have to tolerate me and my identity. And the minute I'm rejecting the orange color, it also means I'm sad. I'm not really happy about it. And the other color that you're leaving out is the green color. The green is talking about how you don't feel respected. You, nobody wants to be called an alien. So um, when red and green is together, it's about responsibility. So what, what strikes you, Rishabh, when I'm talking about responsibility? Not in the sense I have to do something, but responsibility to self, about your self-image and how you need to tolerate yourself. What comes up for you? Now, when it comes to responsibility, I do believe that uh, whenever I take any task related to anything, I do feel that it is my duty and I am responsible that it goes right in every manner because if, if someone is asking me to do something, you know, that person is believing in me. I don't want to let that person down in any way. Right. So, yeah, Here is words. I don't want people I don't want people to feel that I have let down. them down. down. That's minus three. Okay? Like I'm I'm giving them a minus effect. I'm giving them less than they expected me to give them. It's like taking a ball and trying to put it in the uh, and and you don't reach or you reach beyond or you reach not where you're supposed to reach. Somewhere you're feeling you're disappointing people. And has that happened often in your life? Yes, because I do believe that uh, you know whatever I do is a bit of perfectionist which uh, which is lagging. Even if, even if I do something, uh, I do believe after a while that I could have done better in many sense. Right. So it's your expectations. Yes. Expectations. It's your ego. I don't. I not say ego, but yes, expectation because I think I can do a lot better when it comes to not doing anything, even this podcast, or my music, writing, anything. I'm Wonderful. Not, yeah. So if you could, if you could just pick up that expectation and tell us what really is your expectation. Expectation in the sense, uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk about iconic talk show. Like even after uh, any episode which goes online, I do feel I could have asked better questions. Uh, the editing could have been done in a you know more subtle way. I do uh, you know question myself a lot. Like right. what more I could have added into this. Okay. What more I could have done here. Okay. But, How can you still use this, but do it differently? Just be mindful of it and maybe you can think about it. Nobody's asking you to drop the standard, but how could you do it minus a certain emotion that comes up? Because when you feel it hasn't reached up to where you expected it to reach, what's an emotion that's coming up? Disappointment. Thank you. And are you disappointed with you or are you expecting people to be disappointed with you? I'm disappointed with my own. And then what happens? I feel low. And then the vibe is not there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we know when the vibe is not there is when he's going to keep wearing the spectacles because what is the spectacle doing? It's bringing the vibe back. And when he doesn't feel the vibe is there, he just has to remove and he doesn't need to see anything. Anything that's far away, that's, you know, the, the results of the future are far away. How people are going to look is far away. And that's something that he's getting bullied by and he's, Nobody else is bullying him, but he's bullying himself. So um, how can you be mindful of it and how can you think differently would be uh, something that you can probably ask yourself. So, yeah, I hope that helped. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I wish I could, uh, you know, file an FIR FI on my own self. <laughs> 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 it was a joke about it. It was a lovely explanation. 
and I got a new perspective of my own self. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank thank you. you so much for coming and sharing these insightful knowledge with us at the Iconic Talk Show. It was an honor to have you on board, Dr. Thank Anu Mehta. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you, Nirali. It's been such a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.